that with, um, we'll start with the encounter. There, I've, I've, I've split the story into a few parts, and we'll start with the encounter. He comes back home one day, and uh, I'm going to set it up for you. Comes back home one day, and uh, he hears people praying loudly. And one thing that stuck with me that you probably heard, and he asks the servant in the house, is God deaf? Right? Why are they praying so loudly? Take it away from there. <clears throat> I was studying to be a chartered accountant. I was doing my articleship. And uh, it so happened that some uh, Pentecostal women had come uh, because a pastor was living on the first floor of the house. And he had invited them. And they were talking about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. I was not in the meeting, but they invited my mother and my uncle and others to come for the meeting. And so when I came home from my work that day, <clears throat> for the first time in my life, I heard people all praying aloud together, so loud, I'd never heard people pray that loud. So I walk into the house, I ask the guy who's in this, one of the servants, what are they doing, <clears throat> as if I did not know. And so they said, sir, they're praying. <clears throat> I said, well, is God deaf? Because... You know, I had no concept of praying aloud and praying together. I was raised in a denominational background where when you walk into the church, you've got to keep quiet. You've got to be silent. You don't pray under your breath. So anywhere, after the meeting, my mother walks down and she says, Raj, you should have come up. I said, why? She said, no, they're talking about the Holy Spirit. We never heard anything about the Holy Spirit much. And uh, she said, they're talking about the Holy Spirit and they're saying that <clears throat> if you tarry in His presence... You can be filled with the Spirit of God, and God can use you like He used different men of God in the Bible, like Peter and others. And wh while she said that, something gripped my heart. I don't know. I can't explain what it was. And I said, oh, my God. And she said, these two women who started this prayer meeting are not going to come from tomorrow, but they've instructed us to continue to pray every day for a couple of hours. We're going to meet in the evening around 530, and so we're going to continue. I said, I'll be there tomorrow. So I get in there, <clears throat> and uh, the hunger is growing, and it's got to be divine. I had no understanding of what was happening, never been exposed to Pentecostal church or Pentecostal experience. I'd never seen people pray in tongues. I had no experience, no exposure. So anyway, I walk in, <clears throat> and uh, we're all praying together aloud. Believe it or not, our house is on a corner of a street. And we were, all, we were told to tarry praying nothing but hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we all were praying so loud, and I'm not exaggerating, traffic was blocked on the road. They were watching, because I think they were, for the first time, hearing people pray so loudly. And, uh, yeah, kind of upper room, yes. And uh, anyway, we carried on like this, and I was not even sure if I was born again. <clears throat> on the third day, the pastor now talks about being born again. So I said, okay, I'll ask, accept the Lord in my heart. But my sister, everyone was there. We're praying and we're praying and nothing is happening. And then suddenly my sister gets filled with the Spirit first and she starts speaking in tongues. I become jealous. <clears throat> I said, this is not right. So uh, I walked down to the, into our house in the ground floor. I made her to sit in the bed. I can still see it very clearly. I said, now speak in tongues. And she immediately began to speak. And I tried to copy. I tried to imitate, you know, and I could not. And I knew this had to be God. So I, I became even more desperate. But during the process, something happened. God began to birth the hunger so much that nobody told me, but I started fasting. I don't know why, because I started fasting. I started praying. I could not focus on anything. <clears throat> I would go to work, come back. I was always looking to get back to the prayer meeting. <clears throat> and during that time, we ha it so happened that there were a couple of books in the house Brother O. Roberts, and he was dealing with the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And all this began to work towards creating greater hunger in my heart. So, yeah, no, no, that's different. So I come back, and the next day, I began to, I'm in prayer meeting, and I started crying. And I didn't know why I was crying. But it was, I was sobbing so badly, I could not control and after the prayer, about two hours or so, I felt so light and so different. And I didn't know what was going on. But I was not satisfied because I was looking to be filled with the Spirit to be able to speak in tongues. Then what happened, I come on, the next day I come in, and we're praying still. And 
It's like a bolt of thunder that hit me here, went right through me, picked me off the floor, and I began to roll from one end to the room to the other. All by my... And let me tell you, I've never been to a Pentecostal meeting before. Never been to any such uh, expression of the Holy Spirit. So I wake, I, and now I'm like a drunk. I'm totally drunk. By the Holy Spirit, not by alcohol. <coughs> okay. So I sit back, and I look at a person, and I'm prophesying. I'm looking at this person, I'm telling him stories about his life. Knew nothing about the gifts of the Spirit. No exposure, no teaching, nothing at all. And so it was so profound that I, the hunger to know God just began to grow. And I started losing interest in my education, but I didn't stop. Okay? So that was the experience which, all, which started, but I never ever imagined that I would go into ministry. Okay? But that's how it started. You asked me how it started. Yeah, so